Hello, everyone, and welcome to the weekly energy update for the week of September 24th, 2023. I'm Renee Spears, a spirit guide channeler and spiritual mentor, and I'm coming to you from beautiful Bozeman, Montana. Now, every Sunday, I share the energy for the week ahead, and I also infuse the show with some positive vibes, so you get a little positive energy boost just for listening. And it's pretty hard for me to believe that this is the last week of September. And there's a lot of powerful energy this week. Fall started with the equinox and the beginning of Libra season only two days ago. And tonight at sundown, Yom Kippur begins, which is the holiest day of the year in Judaism. And then the week ends with a powerful full moon on Friday. This is a lot of powerful energy in the course of one week. Change is definitely here. So September's full moon is on Friday the 29th, early in the morning, about 3 a.m. Pacific, 6 a.m. Eastern. And that means the best time to see it will probably be on Thursday night. This is the full moon that takes place closest to the fall equinox, and that's why it's called the harvest moon. It's also said to give the harvesters a few extra evenings of moonlight so they can get the crops in. And unlike other full moons, which may have fun names like the strawberry moon or the pink moon, but don't actually look any different than other full moons, September's harvest moon often looks especially big and orange or red. And this year, it'll look even bigger and oranger than usual because it's a supermoon. And this is the last supermoon of the year. And this moon is extra special because it's the first one since the north and the south nodes moved into Aries and Libra, and clearly the first full moon of fall. And while it's not quite eclipse season yet, we can think of this full moon as a sneak peek of what's to come during eclipse season. And this moon helps us to set boundaries, to find harmony in our relationships, and to step into our power and stop letting others dictate our lives. Full moons are perfect for letting go of the past to make way for fresh energy and new opportunities. And this full moon in particular holds some lessons around recognizing imbalances in our lives. Because it's so close to the equinox, which is about balance, and it's in Libra season, which is also about balance. And when the moon is full, it shines this big spotlight on our emotional world, revealing hidden things. And this month, it's revealing where we are out of balance. Now, I've already gotten a taste of this. My mom was here visiting this past week, and I also really wanted to release a spiritual practice for the equinox. And I only see my mom a few days a year. And while she was here, I found myself working instead of spending time with her. I had a moment of like, what the F am I doing? And in my women's wisdom circle, we've been identifying the feelings we want to experience. And two of them for me were ease, and connection with my family. And here I am trying to squeeze in work and feeling like there wasn't enough time, which is definitely not ease, and then not spending time connecting with my family. So I made the decision not to work and release a spiritual practice and instead spend time playing Scrabble, going to Yellowstone, cooking enchiladas with my mom, and getting back in balance. So where are you out of balance? And if you don't know, don't worry, because this full moon is going to shine a big light on it and it will become apparent to you very, very soon. So this full moon is in Aries and it's bringing us full circle from where we started back in March of this year. In March, there was a powerful Aries new moon, followed by an Aries new moon solar eclipse in April. So take a minute and think about what was important or what was on your mind back in March and April of this year. The intentions we set at that time are now coming to fruition under this Aries full moon. And what I love the most about this Aries full moon is that it's a powerful reminder that we are the creators of our lives. With the retrogrades this summer, we may have felt like we're at the whim of the universe and really forgotten how powerful we are. And now it's time to remember that we write our story. We're creating our lives. This is a time to take back your power. And often the power I'm talking about is in our own minds, our own beliefs about ourselves. So this is a fabulous time for some empowering affirmations, even if you aren't normally an affirmation person. Affirmations like, I am strong, capable, and confident. I can do anything I put my mind to. 
I am creating my life. Now, Aries is sometimes referred to as the warrior of the zodiac because of its determination and its assertiveness. So during this moon, you can tap into your inner spiritual warrior to stand up for your beliefs and your values and what you want your life to be. A full moon in Aries brings us a surge of energy and enthusiasm. It's a time when we feel more confident, we're more motivated and driven. And this helps us to take those ideas we've had in our minds that have been stirring around all summer and start putting them into physical form. No doubt there are some things you've been thinking about doing, and now it's time to take action on them. So if you could use a little bit more confidence, a little bit more movement, and a little more passion about life, it's your lucky week because we get all of that with the energy of this full moon. And of course, there's another side to this energy too. Sometimes when fiery energy is strong like this, we can be prone to anger, to outbursts, to aggression, to frustrations. And if we're out of balance and have something bubbling up within, we may find ourselves easily triggered under this full moon. So the best way to move any of this excess energy out of your body is with movement. So things like exercise, dancing, and taking action are all great ways to soften and release any of those heated emotions. So keep that in mind because the emotions may be really heightened under this full moon because it's sandwiched between the equinox and the eclipse season. So both the equinox and the eclipses are highly transformative and bring changes into our lives. And this super moon is shining a big light on where we are out of balance and where we have wanted to move forward and just haven't yet because of the sluggish retrograde season. And now we get the surge of confidence and energy to get moving. We'll feel stronger, more courageous, and ready to stop feeling sorry for ourselves and get on with creating our lives. We start to feel like we can see the end of the year in sight, which could feel both overwhelming and reassuring. So with the equinoxes around the corner, we feel better right now when we have some sense of stability in our lives. While we can't control everything and the eclipses are notorious for bringing change, having something to work toward and plan around can make us feel so much calmer and at ease at a time like this. And it doesn't have to be anything big. Maybe creating a routine for yourself, setting some boundaries, or taking some steps forward with the things you've been dreaming about. All those can help us feel more stable and also help us reclaim our personal power. This full moon gives us the final push to take action before the slowness of fall season sets in, which feels so good. So one more thing to mention. If you've been feeling stifled by any type of relationship, not just romantic, you may not be able to take it much longer because Mars, which is the planetary ruler of this full moon, will be forming a conjunction with South Node of Destiny, helping us to cut unhealthy cords. So on the same day, Venus, the planet of relationships and pleasure, will be forming a square with Uranus, the planet of freedom. And what all of this mumbo jumbo means is that if a relationship hasn't been feeling right, regardless of its nature, you have cosmic permission to put yourself first and end it now. This harvest full moon carries an energy of endings. That could be the end of relationships, the end of feeling powerless, the end of feeling like you're not moving forward, the end of feeling out of balance. And these are all good endings that allow us to step into our power. Remember, this is our story and it's time to get on with it, whatever it may be. And that's it for the week. I did release the Fall Astrology Podcast with Deborah Norton this week, so be sure to check that out if you missed it. And I will be, I will be releasing a spiritual practice for this lovely full moon um, now that I'm feeling a little bit more back in balance. It'll have more in-depth astrology, um, tarot, guided meditation that will focus on stepping into your power, um, channeled messages from my spirit guides, and it'll be pay what you can on my YouTube channel. So I'm just having a piddle around the house day today, getting some things cleaned up, trimming some plants, getting my winter clothes out. I love to just piddle like this. 
So as always, thank you for listening, liking, commenting, subscribing, and especially sharing this podcast with a friend. Last week, four clients mentioned that they always share the podcast. And I want to say I really, really, really appreciate that. So have a great full moon and a great week, everyone. And I'll talk to you again next week.